In October, Dr. Fauci was blasted following reports of the NIH-funded experiments on beagles. Now, Congresswoman Nancy Mace is calling out Dr. Fauci for apparent NIH-funded animal abuse on monkeys. According to Mace, there are over 3,500 monkeys currently living on Morgan Island, and up to 600 each year are removed for use in cruel taxpayer-funded experiments by the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Here's what she told The Hill's editor-at-large, Steve Clemens. Monkey Island is an island off of Morgan Island, off the coast of my district in South Carolina. We thought it was more of a retirement community for monkeys that had been part of lab experiments. Well, what we found out a few weeks ago is they're taking five or 600 monkeys a year and then putting them into labs. Uh, just disgusting and barbaric uh, scientific lab testing with these monkeys and, uh, and killing them, and it's disgusting. And so we just found out about this. Dr. Fauci still has not responded to my letter about beagle puppies. And so now we just found this out and I will be going down to Monkey Island uh, in a few weeks to bring light and attention to this issue. This is an issue like cannabis that I believe can bring Republicans and Democrats together. Joining us now to weigh in on this and with an update on Beaglegate is journalist Glenn Greenwald. Glenn, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. So, uh, you know, with Beaglegate, love to hear what's going on with that, because one side is saying, look at the monster of, of Dr. Fauci. And then, of course, you have Fauci and the people defending him saying it's not what you people think. So what's the update on it? I think it's become in a lot of ways a story not just about grotesque, morally atrocious experimentation on dogs and animals, which is the story and I hope continues to be. But at this point is a story about how media disinformation functions in order to serve partisan aims. The uh, the issue of government funded experiments of morally in unjustifiable uh, experiments on animals has been around for many years. And suddenly people decided because it now reflects poorly on Dr. Fauci that they need to start do so, doing something to minimize or dismiss the issue or to try and shield Dr. Fauci from the growing public anger over it. And in order to do that, they're using these incredibly corrupt journalistic tactics. So the agency controlled by Dr. Fauci acknowledges that it funds and its agencies oversee thousands of experiments on dogs, incredibly cruel experiments that cause amazing suffering with almost no medical value. There's no controversy about that. They don't dispute that. What they did instead was decide the media and the Washington Post decided to focus on one experiment in particular in Tunisia in which puppy, beagle puppies, um, are have their heads put into this uh, kind of container that keeps them immobile while sand flies consume them alive. And originally when the study was published, the researchers said they got funding from the NIH. And then when there was public controversy, issued a, corre a weird correction and retraction saying, no, we made a mistake. It actually didn't come from that. And the media outlets are using this to say, look, this was disinformation all along, when in reality, it was just one study that's in dispute. And even that is kind of odd that they said they got funding from Fauci and then it then denied it. But even if you believe that denial and there's reasons not to, it's still the case that he's overseeing thousands and thousands of medically unjustifiable and morally grotesque experimentations on dogs, which the media is trying to distract attention from by focusing on this one single experiment that they've been able to create doubt around. Yeah, and so, and Glenn, the recent piece that we just put up there, your headline is to protect Fauci, the Washington Post is preparing a hit piece on the group denouncing gruesome dog experimentations. And when, you know, when I saw that headline, I, I assumed that you were kind of making a, making a, connect, a connection between these two things, but then as you read through the reporting, it's like, no, no, that's, you're, you're being literal. That the, and that the, Was the Washington Post did, did appear to be motivated specifically to protect Fauci and was even kind of explicit in its conversations with the White Coats, which, with, with this animal rights group, that, that that was driving their reporting on this question, that they felt like, you know, if you, ch if you challenged Fauci on this question, that it could undermine his ability to grapple with the pandemic and was, then, was therefore so, then problematic. Uh, can, yeah, so walk through a little bit oh, of this right, reporting. Right. Yeah, no, exactly. So the, first of all, this group, White Coat Waste Project, is a small nonprofit 
that has done an incredible job over many years before people were obsessed with Fauci in uniting the left and the right around this cause. They kind of fused the cause of animal rights, which has been long associated with the, uh, the left, with the cause of wasteful government spending, which has obviously been a long time right wing um, uh, agenda item and fuse them together in order to unite people on the left and right, as Congresswoman May said. And for years, media outlets like The Washington Post were praising this group, saying it's an incredibly rare success that they've been able to actually create a trans ideological bipartisan coalition in defense of a noble cause. Suddenly, when their activism began to endanger Dr. Fauci's reputation by pointing to the experiments that he's overseeing, the Washington Post changed their own narrative 180 degrees by sending them a bunch of questions that were obviously designed to prove that, in fact, there's some sort of clandestine MAGA group or like right wing operatives who don't really care about the cause of animal welfare and only are trying to harm Dr. Fauci for political ends. And it completely failed their effort. Not only did they make explicit that their motive was that, Ryan, they were saying, aren't you worried that by criticizing Dr. Fauci, for these things he's doing, that it'll undermine his ability to administer COVID policies, essentially saying Dr. Fauci should be off limits from criticism, which is an incredible uh, and shocking thing to hear from journalists saying that there should be one of the most powerful and influential public officials in government who should be off limits from criticism. But then even in the article that they did run, in which they exactly tried to do what I warned they were trying to do, which was to depict this once like beloved group as some sort of like, you know, crypto Trump group, um, which has no basis in reality. Almost all of their funding comes from the public, from small donors. They use the Bernie model for funding and still do. They never got any money from Trump world or anywhere else. But the headline was basically Dr. Fauci's hotline is being inundated by citizens angry about these experiments. And that is that is endangering his ability to give counseling to people seeking information on COVID as if like ordinary citizens confused about vaccines call Dr. Fauci directly. But the, <laughs> the, the framework they tried to create is like if you make trouble for Dr. Fauci, you're engaged in some un inherently unethical act. Yeah, and I, I want to read from the email that that you obtained and published in your in your recent piece. This is this is a Washington Post reporter, you know, writing to the head of the, the White Coats, saying, "I guess my question would be what your fundraising was like in October, and whether you have continued and will continue to not take any money." from political committees or dark money groups? Have you turned donations away from pro-Trump or conservative groups whom I would expect would embrace your campaign targeting Fauci? That's the email from The Washington Post to the head of White Coast because they had been asking for all of the fundraising data and the data that they got back wasn't feeding them the story that they were hoping, which was they, I guess they thought some big pro-Trump donor had funded this project they were going to be able to find that donor and then write like this is a pro-Trump anti-Fauci report. When they didn't find that, they, they sort of are asking for a promise that they will turn away donations from pro-Trump or conservative groups who would embrace your campaign targeting Fauci. What was the White Coat's uh, res response to that? And did any of that wind up in the Washington Post article that was subsequently published? Exactly. So this is the key is they were obviously digging for a huge amount of financial information that ordinarily no nonprofit organizations disclose publicly. But White Coat had nothing to hide. And so they were feeding these reporters. It was like they were dealing with some kind of like obsessive compulsive IRS auditor, you know, <laughs> like just the more they provided, the more that they were asking for, because as you said, they weren't finding what they wanted, which was the evidence that would allow them to say, oh, look, this group is being funded by pro-Trump. Uh, groups and therefore you should disregard what they're saying, which even if they were being funded by groups that were pro-Trump, what would that mean? How would that in any way undermine or, or call into question the veracity and reliability of their activism? Of course it wouldn't. It was designed to kind of do a political campaign for Fauci. And they just kept turning over everything. And what they said was, look, not only haven't we gotten any pro-Trump money, but actually, our fundraising has, if anything, remained kind of stable or even declined a little bit over the last one or two months. We haven't had this huge outpouring 
of money from pro-Trump activists because they're happy we're criticizing Fauci because this is the work we've always been doing. And so then when the Washington Post, you know, instead of being interested in the truth, they were obviously looking for a political angle, a political narrative. When they couldn't do that, they demanded that this group take some like bizarre vow that they're going to scrutinize the politics of their future donors and pledge never to take money from anybody on the right. Why would any nonprofit group, especially one devoted to uniting the left and the right around a non ideological cause, make a vow like that? But the real point was they didn't get any of that money. And the Washington Post, in attempting to say, oh, look, this is a really a Republican group. This guy has ties to Republican politics, just ignored the fact that they went fishing for all this data, got all the data, and never found what it was that they were looking for and stuck to the narrative that this group is a white ring group, even though the evidence they obtained negated that claim. Yeah, this is like one of the better examples of this just horrible phenomena where it's like resistance liberals are going to endorse torturing animals be- in, 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 if right wing people ha- are giving money to an organization that's against that. Like it's so necessary to be to 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 have everyone on one side and never uh, agree with your enemies and have no like coalition building or whatsoever, which is why I think I, this is happening. And, and Nancy Mace has actually been sort of in trouble actually with her own side for some other things because she's been criticizing uh, Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Greene because she's, you know, feuding because she's not such a Trumpist. And it's, it's just very difficult for like interesting political figures who have, you know, who want to work with a mix of different people to survive in this landscape because you have to be all in on, you know, the most the craziest anti-Trump side or the craziest pro-Trump side to like fit into or to be understood by our media. Yeah, I think like this caricature that liberals have in their minds about what conservatives are like. And in fairness, conservatives have the same caricature or, or similar ones about people on the left. Like they think everyone on the left is like a communist and a Marxist. And you like people on the left look at Nancy Pelosi's stock portfolio and, you know, break out <laughs> laughing at the idea that she's some sort of Marxist. But the idea that nobody on the right could possibly have a genuine moral concern when hearing about hideous experimentation on puppies is the kind of thing you believe if you're ensconced in a liberal bubble and believe that everyone remotely related to conservative politics or who supports Trump is nothing but a complete sociopath. I first wrote about dog experimentations in the industry that uh, fuels it in 2018 when I was at The Intercept. We produced this video. It went viral. One of the reasons it went viral was because so many people on the right were horrified to learn that the government breeds into the world canine life with no purpose but to experiment on it. So they're in cages from the time they're born. They're only bred in order to be objects for experimentation. And then they're killed once the experiment is done. And this idea of uniting the left and the right around animal rights has been successful for years precisely because, and know it's shocking for some liberals, but like there is actually humanity also found among people who have conservative political ideology and they too love their dogs and love their animals and love their pets and think it's hideous to subject them to completely gratuitous but intense suffering. And so it's that kind of caricature that the media is fostering by saying, obviously, no right wing support for this project could be genuine. They're only doing it out of a cynical attempt to destroy Fauci. And yeah. the Washington Post is the one fueling that caricature. Yeah, right. When when the reality is and it, we had you on earlier and we talked about this, it's 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 a way to get attention to an issue that is too often ignored. And it's looking for some grander conspiracy than that is a fool's errand. But Glenn, uh, gr- uh, great to have you on. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for covering this, guys. I appreciate it. Good to talk to you. And we'll have more Rising right after this.